All right, we're good. Ready to go? Yep. All right, okay. Meeting call to order. I'd like to right. start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Hold on one second, I will share. Okay. All right, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Eric, announcements? First announcements are the inspectors. There was a question to recount or request to recount the ballots. Uh, the inspectors are still doing that. They were in here on Tuesday. I uh, got about halfway through. Uh, when I checked on them about an hour ago, they were at District 14. So I anticipate that to be complete today. Uh, hopefully we'll have the results, the final results today. If not tonight, then first thing in the morning. You uh, don't expect anything to change, right? I, I wouldn't expect to, but... Um, so why are we doing this? Uh, there was a request by uh, Lila to, to do the recount. As I see. All right. A few votes. So, uh, also, age verification, we sent that out. We've gotten a ton of them back. Um, we had a few uh, yesterday that were coming through just the in the issues email saying, uh, you know, I'm Fred, I'm 72, and I live at this address. We really need the form. Uh, so, we updated that today on the data report to send the actual form back. Uh, we can't just print out the email and put it in the file. Uh, but please, please return that. Uh, we need to get uh, everybody's age verification back for our federal purposes to still be an age qualified community and uh, and uh, it, it's every two years so we'll be doing this again in 2022 uh, i guess the government thinks that we're getting younger uh, but we are not unfortunately uh, and then my monthly to slow down is 30 miles an hour on the circle 25 on the side streets and 15 in the uh lodge parking lot uh, with that We'll go to homeowner input. Uh, it's limited to three minutes. And only one request to speak, maybe one person may speak at a time. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so I can find people easier. I'm gonna open up chat for a moment so I can see if anybody wants to speak. So chat has been turned on. If you would like to speak, please send me a message. I know I had one person before the meeting that had emailed me, Keith, but I do not see him in here. He said he might not be able to, to join if he's working. Or you could raise your hand, there's a way to raise your hand virtually. Sandra, I assume, let's find Sandra. I assume it's the Sandra, the Sandra Butler, based on the username. Let's see. Sandra, I've asked you to unmute, so you're going to need to also unmute yourself. There we go. All right, you are on, Sandra. Hi. Um, I've been trying to find out uh, what we can do so that, um, as a resident, I can be informed <laughs> when they're going to spray chemicals, uh, because last Friday, um, I um, had some burning in the back of my throat and in my bronchial tubes, and it was a it turned into a big thing. And um, Kaiser wanted to know what was being sprayed, and the poison control wanted to be know what was being sprayed. And I was unable to answer their questions. Um, and it was hours later before before I found out. I had originally told him it's definitely not Roundup because I was told Roundup Roundup's no longer being sprayed in the community. Uh, but then you text me, Eric, and told me it was Roundup afterwards. And so I gave the wrong information to the, the, med the medical personnel as well as the poison control. And I, I don't know for sure what it was, but I would like to be able to answer the questions of these professionals. And I was unable to do that because it feels like it's being kept a secret. And I don't understand why we need, as residents, should we need to know that information. Okay. Uh, thank you, Sandra. That, that's 
First of all, we're not able to, to go into deep discussions in, in homeowner input, but I will uh, text you this morning that I give you a call and I'll, I'll definitely give you a call after the meeting and also follow up with uh, something in writing. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anybody else that would like to speak? Let's see if Yeah, see nobody else that's asking to speak. Uh, we will leave homeowner input. Uh, next is the consent calendar. Uh, the purpose of the consent calendar is to make a single motion to approve all included items. If for a particular reason an item needs to be pulled. I move we accept the consent calendar. I second it. Thank you. Any discussion on the uh, consent calendar? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody opposed? Okay, carries unanimous. Thank you. Next is a report on executive session or action taken between meetings. Uh, there was an executive session held earlier today. Uh, the board reviewed the delinquency policy and approved that, which will be going out uh, tomorrow via email and, and posted. Uh, there were no lien or foreclosure items. Uh, there were member hearings, uh, reviewed contracts, legal issues, and personnel. And with that, we'll go to committee reports. First is architectural. Steve, let me find you. Found you. Let me unmute you. Steve. Okay. Am I here? You are. Uh, actually, do you want your, let me uh, share the screen so your slide is up as well. How about All right. That? Sorry, I'm going between three screens. So, there we go. There we go. All right, here's the screen. Um, they're really not all that exciting and thrilling. As you can see, there's still activity happening in the uh, community. Even though we've got most people moved in, there's still some new stuff happening, some people making some changes. We just remind you if you're making changes to your landscape or the outside of your house, it probably needs to be uh, submitted and an approval made. As we've stated before, we're not doing all of the exhibit C's as they're submitted to us, we're only doing the ones that are outside that we can see without knocking on your door and coming into your neighborhood. So if you have completed the work, go ahead and submit your exhibit C. So that once we hit the point that uh, we can go back out into the community and, and chat with our neighbors, we don't have a, an overwhelming number of them. Um, it's really all we have to say. I could run through the numbers, but you can see them. And basically what's happening is the stuff that's being submitted, we're getting approved or we're working through it and finding a way to make it work. That's everything from the architectural committee except our standard. We do have some openings. We do need a couple new people. Uh, come see what we're doing. It might be your bag of tea, but you'll never know if you don't check it out. We meet the first and third uh, Wednesday of every month. With our next meeting falling on the, looks like the second. That's it. Thanks, Steve. Let me find your mute. Uh, thank you. You're next. Well, we can well, council. Let me. You are unmuted. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Great. Um, the slide that's there. Uh, oh shoot! Now my, now my dog starts to bark. <laughs> Very appropriate for the K9 kid. <laughs> for dog. No, really, huh? Stop it, Sky. Be quiet. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Let me let it. <laughs> real quick <laughs> it happens to one of us at every single one of our meetings yeah <laughs> i know it's like oh, you're not paying attention to me yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay um when the uh, slides were due uh i had information at that time that uh is not up to date now because i thought that we were going to have uh, 
an item go to finance and then I'll be ready for board approval by now. And that didn't happen yet. So I'm going to change the, um, the slide a little bit. Uh, I wasn't able to update the slide quite a while back. But what I do have is um, the, first section, uh, the first section is still right, that since the last board report, it was determined the council will be a function of the AOA, HOA. And as such, uh, we'll not need to file for the nonprofit status after all, which is great. We will open a checking account through the HOA and be able to accept donations, which will support the Canine Corral. Our fundraising coordinators, Terry DiMarino and Jeff Davidson, have some great ideas. So watch for some op upcoming opportunities and events for fundraising. Um, you don't have anything in your board packet, so we're gonna wipe out that next bullet. Um, instead, it was recommended that I clarify the uh, landscaping needs for the area. So I've added to my uh, slideshow here, the zone area along Breckenridge was released to the HOA and as such is required to be landscaped. The area determined for placement and corral will not require landscaping. So that results in a cost savings to the HOA. The fenced area inside the corral will be covered with decomposed granite. The area outside of the canine corral will still need to be landscaped. And our landscape committee has met with the canine corral council for ideas of pet safe plants and trees. Our uh, 11 board and committee chairs also meet monthly to coordinate efforts under the direction of the board of directors. So we are coordinating with landscape committee, but uh, the landscaping around the canine corral will be HOA landscaping, not canine corral landscaping. So I wanted to make sure everyone understood that it wasn't going to be a cost to the HOA to landscape the canine corral. So in the next bullet, um, the proposal form uh, has now been submitted to finance. So it's not on in your board packet. The finance committee will um, take a look at our recommendations in the proposal to accept a bid that our council approved to install the FOB system. The FOB system will provide the most secure access for approved members. They will also have passed an orientation seminar. Um, the proposal form also requests approval of the Canine Corral Council's action to approve a non-refundable membership fee of $100 per accepted dog and a $30 annual renewal fee per dog. The FOB system installation, the membership fees, along with the reimbursement of the cost of the member logo dog tags, that will set our fundraising goal to a total of $10,698. We have uh, vacancies on our council for interested residents. The council is set up as a board, so if you are a member of another committee, you can still participate on the Canine Corral Council, and there are no term limits. Thank you. Thanks, Sandra. Sandra, what do you see? Excuse me. What, what do you see doing with that ten thousand six ninety eight? What what ideas do you have? Do you have them yet, or is it just uh, a, a bucket of money just in case? No, it's actually the, the goal set by the FOB system bid that was accepted, and also the. Um, uh, Basically, that's the majority of it, and then also we need to uh, pay back the uh, mem for the member logo dog tags that we've purchased. And so we are uh, we have that bid that was accepted. So that, in combination with the logo dog tags, comes to that ten thousand six hundred ninety-eight dollar figure. Okay, thank you, Sandy. Yes. Uh, Pete Antoine here. Hi, Pete. Hi there. I understand, <laughs> I understand you to say that there will be no cost to the HOA. Right. Yeah, this is our fundraising goal. Okay. Did you Any get other that? Questions from the board to Sandra? No. Okay. All right, Sandra, I am 
gonna find you then you <laughs> there you go uh, next would be Lori Larson with communications let me find you <clears throat> all right Lori hi can you hear me I can great hi everybody hi Lori uh, hello <laughs> The communications board has 14 members, and right now we are not looking for, nor are we accepting new members. Um, and we're still publishing interviews that were conducted prior to stay at home orders, so we're not violating anything during our interviews. We'll continue to publish articles and columns with information that was current at the time the magazine was printed. However, we're aware that we cannot keep current after printing and ask that everybody have that awareness. And since the Breeze is published monthly, do check the website, which is updated daily by Mr. Workman, for the most current, up-to-date information. We're doing our best to keep the website current, and we partner with the Daily Report to ensure that we do just that. You don't have to be a member of the Communications Board to have an article published. If you have an idea, uh, please contact our publisher at the address and phone number at the back of the breeze. And then um, Kelly Moore uh, wants to be a new member. She has completed all requirements to become a communications board member. And her name has been submitted to the board for approval. So we ask that her membership be voted upon and approved. Is that something that can be done today? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, we will be conducting meetings via Zoom. Our regular meeting schedule is not in place anymore. It's just kind of fluid. However, we are going to have a meeting by Zoom hosted by Cindy uh, this coming Wednesday, May 27th at 10 a.m. So if um, you're interested, get, send your email address in and we will put you on the uh, Zoom list. Okay, that's about it. Should we approve Kelly Moore now? Yes, please. Okay, I move that we approve Kelly Moore for the Second. communication for the bo Second. communication board member. Uh, second the motion. Uh, I think Larry was the first second. All right. All right. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you all. Thank you. All right. Let me mute you, Lori. Find Mike. Mike, are you there? Mike. Is that there Connie? Yeah, I, I, I unmuted him. Uh, I'm here. I called in yesterday and told him Mike will not be there today. He's out of town. Got it. All right. Thanks, Connie. I called Eric yesterday. He told me he'd let you and uh, the other Eric and Nellie both know. Got it. Sorry about that. Sorry. I. Oh. All right. Thanks, Connie. Well, then we will go to facilities. I'm just trying to get in. All right, Jim, you are unmuted. I'm unmuted, okay. Okay, uh, right now, uh, the conversion of the pickleball and paddleball lights uh, are in the process of being uh, retrofitted, and uh, that will be finished, I think, by Tuesday. Uh, so the new lighting will be available for pickleball and paddleball. Uh, the roofing project for the uh, Lodge RCN building, the spa building, is moving along and progress is is moving along well and uh, from all the reports i'm seeing it looks like a good job is being done and it's getting monitored, monitored by our uh, company that we hired the engineering company to, to monitor that work uh, we're in the process right now of uh, gathering proposals for a permanent fix on the loose pavers at the uh, potrero entrance uh, that keeps getting torn up by delivery trucks and uh, trash trucks and construction trucks so we're going to be uh, getting proposals on that and hopefully get that submitted to the board soon 
the committee is working uh, and wishing for a board approval uh, to replace the door jams and casings on the exterior doors uh, to the swimming pool room uh, at the summit uh, it deteriorated because of rot. And so that is before the board, I think, for today. And also, uh, we're wishing for approval for repair uh, and reworking the uh, water feature and fountain uh, out the, uh, the back doors to the lodge. Uh, that's a, uh, has disintegrated and it's been turned off for a while. So we do have numbers on that. And that's presented um, to the board today. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's about it. The facilities committee meets on the second Wednesday of the month. And uh, it, we're doing it on Zoom right now. And it's at 10 AM. So that's about it. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Uh -huh. This is landscape. Hey, Barry. There you are. Barry, you are, you are unmuted. Thank you, Eric, and uh, congratulations to all the new uh, board members that were elected uh, last week, and welcome to our, our board meeting. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. It's nice to see a full board from our perspective that we have all the full, full membership. Uh, February financials are what are on the slide up here. But in the interim, we are trying to catch up since the uh, first services had switched over their uh, income financial uh, systems. Uh, so we actually had a meeting this Tuesday and reviewed March, and they follow a similar pattern to what you're seeing for February. Uh, the, the key number is the net income. The net income through March is $168,000. And I'd like to say that the variances are in four categories. One is utilities, which there's about $40,000 variance there, and it is mostly due to water. And I just want to reiterate that when we look at the budget, we divide up the budget for water in 12 months, and we don't spend a lot of money on water January, February, March. But believe me, with the weather coming this week, uh, next week, and on, we will be using that water. Uh, we have some landscape uh, excess of about $11,000 right now, which we will catch up on as we uh, get into the season to be able to do some more work and into the fall when we do more planning. Uh, maintenance, uh, there's a variance in maintenance right now, which we'll probably get caught up with also. And then there's an, an admin uh, amount, and uh, that had to do with some payroll and uh, not catching up in time the payroll. Uh, and some pay increases that were in there. So we have a little bit of uh, a surplus of about $56,000 right there. A question that has uh, come up over the last four or five weeks since we have been uh, kind of shut down our facilities, we've had several uh, requests, Eric has and I have, regarding, well, would we refund our HOA fee, anything because we're not being able to use the facilities. But as you're aware, the facilities are still there and they still need to have the normal maintenance and upkeep that we do all the time. Our staff is fully working. The, the lawns crews are out doing that work. The only area that we think may possibly be in, been affected by having the shutdown could be our electrical uh, and gas utilities since we the buildings were not at full capacity and using air conditioning and, and, and gas for heating if, if that was necessary. We will be looking at those numbers uh, after we come out of this uh, restrictive period to see if there is any appreciable difference in that. And, and the Finance Committee would be making a recommendation to the board uh, regarding any excess that could be attributed to uh, the, the COVID shutdown of the facility. Uh, if also on, on the line up there, you will notice the HOA fee default, which is uh, owners that are behind in payments, that 0.49% are people that are over $1,000 uh, behind. If you look at the most current, as we had our meeting this Tuesday, that number is 0.76 right now. Uh, and overall, we have about a 0.84% of people that owe us something from a, a dollar up to over $1,000, which is under 18 owners uh, at this time. Uh, at our April meeting, we reviewed four proposals and have re recommended those to the board for approval. 
uh, which will be coming up for a vote later. Uh, I would like to request the Finance Committee uh, is recommending uh, David Sweet to become a member of the Finance Committee. David has attended uh, the required meetings. We've interviewed him, and he's uh, got great background to fit in well with the Finance Committee. So I would ask that the board approve him as a member of the committee. I'll make a motion to approve David Sweet for the Finance Committee. What? I'd like to second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Welcome to the finance. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, the next thing is our next regular uh, meeting uh, would have been May 26, which was this Tuesday, but because we had a meeting this Tuesday, we sort of circumvented that. But we will be having a meeting on June the 2nd to review the April financials. This is part of what I said when I began. We're trying to catch up on the financials that we were behind in. So we will be doing the April financials at a June 2nd meeting. And then our next regular meeting will be June 30th at 1 p.m. Zoom, unless something else uh, allows us to be live in person. Thank you. Thanks, Barry. Let me, next will be landscape. Let me find Lynette. Let me unmute her and mute. All right, Lynette, you are unmuted. Okay, uh, and I echo Barry's congratulations to the new board members, and it is good to have all of you on board. And uh, the um, Landscape Committee uh, is very, very pleased that Jolene will be our liaison, and our meeting this Tuesday, uh, Joe Barletta set in, and we're sad to lose Joe, but uh, we appreciate him pinch hitting for Jolene at our meeting on Tuesday. Uh, the uh, not having our Friday walks uh, and having some major projects uh, uh, that have put on delay has caused the committee to be um, behind uh, in a lot of things. That's why I uh, have nothing to say except enjoy the beautiful uh, carpet red roses that are bursting their butts all over the place and all the other things that are causing my nose to itch around here <laughs> and perhaps other <laughs> things. But that nose itching will dissipate. Uh, I will not be impacted uh, uh, health-wise by scratching my nose. And so all I can say is we've got a lot of work to do. We've got a great committee and we are uh, suspending any new uh, applications to our committee until we get a handle on this, which we think won't be until June next year. So. Um, Definitely send your um, request for any kind of work uh, uh, in, that you see to Shannon. Uh, and uh, that's the first service is the one that signs the check. So uh, that's the best way to get any attention areas that need to be attended to. And we can't wait to get back on our Friday walks. It really has us hamstrung in uh, being uh, up to speed with a new new vendor in the old area and that sort of thing. We, we've got a lot on our plate right now. So enjoy and pay attention and we're there for you when we can be up to speed. Thank you. And everything looks beautiful, Lynette, let me tell you. Thank beautiful. you, Gracie, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, thanks, Lynette. Next would be safety with Anita, let me find where. Anita, I've asked you to unmute. So it might be something you need to do as well. How is that? There we go. Okay, welcome everyone. And again, uh, echoing the congratulations. Now, actually, as you see, I am the chairperson and our co-chairperson was Kathy Craven. And we're going to miss her, but she can always come back to our meetings, all of you. <laughs> Um, we did not have an April meeting, but our next meeting will be on Tuesday, the 2nd of June. We meet the first Tuesday of the month. As you know, that um, we basically are changing the speed hub, and Eric Rosencrantz should be on as well. So on the gates will be called on Crooked Creek on Friday and Breckenridge. Um, so just let me know that that's going to happen, but also I did see something that both the gates are going to exit and enter gates. 
will be closed. So you guys can talk a little bit more about that. We basically have a proposal for, um, for the board to approve. And because different residents have asked us to look at, and this has been over a while, a good year or so, they have asked us to look at putting a line down the street because of people basically veering to the other side. So we have a proposal and that can be with the painted stripes or if you want to put the little raised ones, you can do that. That's later in the group. Basically stay safe, stay positive, and that's what we're doing in safety. Thank you. Thanks, Anita. And next would be social. I find you. All right, now you are unmuted. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and congrats uh, to all of the new board members. Um, we're still in planning um, our events. Um, <laughs> let's hope this one's not going to get canceled. But anyway, um, July 11th is the Mentalist Show with Mark Stone, um, and that'll start at 6 p.m. Tickets are uh, going to go on sale June 14th at 9 o'clock a.m., and the tickets are uh, $20. We are hoping, um, if he agrees to this, to uh, have two shows that day, one uh, uh, um, you know, an afternoon show and then an evening show. Um, so, and meanwhile, uh, at that event, we'll be serving refreshments and coffee with masks on, of course, and gloves. Uh, to avoid any sort of uh, contact and um, giving anybody anything else. Uh, we'll also consider uh, couples and singles as we divide or decide seating uh, six feet apart in rows. We are sure how many were able to attend this event at that time. So our next meeting is January 2nd at one o'clock and we're still doing it at Zoom um, unless anything changes. Thank you. Thanks, Loretta. The mental team will be in the ballroom, right? Uh, hold on, I muted her. Let me get her unmuted. And I have a question on that also. Oh, perfect, hold on, one second. All right, Loretta, you are back on. Yes, it'll be in the ballroom, of course. And, and there was any thought given to holding it outside where maybe we can spread out more and have more people? We're, we're kind of throwing this up in the air. Uh, it's a possibility. Um, but again, we'd probably have to do two shows because, you know, how much room do we have outside for being six feet apart, you know? Well, I don't, I don't mean uh, doing it in the amphitheater. I'm, I'm thinking more in terms of, uh, behind behind the uh, the fountain where you can set up a little stage there have them you know on that on that platform have him on the platform and with that whole big wide open space out there uh, you can have a ton of people spread very nicely apart we well, definitely will bring that up at our next uh uh meeting thank you what did you, well, thank what did you. you say the next meeting would be i'm sorry when did you say your next meeting will be? Uh, June 2nd. At 1 o'clock. Uh-huh. Okay. So that's another one. But that we should be okay. That That's the same time that the finance committee is meeting, but we've got uh, separation of, of uh, boards for that. So that should be okay. Anything else for Loretta? Nope. Gracie, I, Gracie, I thought you had something. I did, but Joe asked the question before I got to it. So we're fine. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Loretta. Yep. Thanks. I'm going to mute you again. Oh. Okay. Uh, next would be Tech Ops. I don't see anybody on here from Tech Ops, so then it'd be back down to Anita with the community ambassador. Let me find you, Anita. One second. I'll ask you to unmute. 
There we go. Uh, basically, on this particular situation that we're in, I want to just say thank you again to Eric and his team on keeping us abreast of being healthy and safe. So basically, the um, everything else, everybody is really trying to do their part. So as a community ambassador, just smile. Be glad that you have a lot of people. That beautiful place, landscaping is just absolutely wonderful. But stay healthy and safe. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Thanks, Anita. Thank you. Mute you again. And that's it for our committees. Next will be Cindy with the activities director. Let me find you, Cindy. I found you. You are unmuted. Can you hear me, Cindy? Oh, hold on. I asked to unmute. Time out. We can't hear you. You got to unmute yourself. Yeah. Try it again. OK. Hello? There we go. There we go. OK. Oh, I just wanted to put a little plug in at the very end of Loretta's comment regarding trying to be forward thinking. Should our mandate be um, released a little bit as far as public gatherings? And we are working with Willis Fagan and his super duper AutoCAD um, to be able to take a lead from Texas um, since they are opening up right now. And what we're doing is just trying to get the logistics going on as far as taking the square footage of the ballroom, um, going with 50% capacity, room capacity, which is what they're doing in Texas, and then six foot apart, and getting some drawings for what that would look like um, in order to uh, be in compliance should that mandate be released. So there's a bunch of different um, figuring that's going on as far as how to handle a show like that and how we might move forward with shows um regarding seating and that kind of thing but anyway i just thought i'd i'd put that in there for it. that, that oh. sounds like a good idea by the way eric i'm i still have community ambassador anita up uh on my screen that's all i'm seeing me too uh, how about now sorry about that. i'm, I'm here i have actually running the slides from the back so i i was taking a break i i uh i need to get back on my game sorry about that Okay, we I have, have activities up now. Cindy's please. smiling face here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have Cindy's picture up there. Okay, so Cindy. as you can tell, we are working hard and fast trying to keep the community feeling like there's community unity and connectedness during this time. We are getting, I'm getting so many emails from people who are just going stir crazy and wanting as many uh, virtual activities and so forth as we can come up with. So we are trying to do that. We're also soliciting some of our other groups and clubs to see folks from them to see uh, what they might be able to work with us, collaborate with us and do for the community. And our wonderful Mary Alice Charba, who is the head of the Crafty Card Makers, is going to offer another quarantine craft for us, um, for the whole community. And they're putting together card making kits with three all occasion cards, or even specific occasions, if you talk to Mary Alice Charba. And they'll have instructions and so forth for a little class. And the kits are only $6 for the supplies to make three cards. Um, you can go ahead and email uh, Mary Alice Torba, and she's in the breeze. Um, and she has kindly offered to deliver your kits to your individual porch addresses. How about that? Um, so check out the daily report for her contact also if you need that. Uh, we will be holding a Memorial Day Masterpieces creative photo competition, which will run from May 12th through May 25th. 
Two winners will be chosen and announced on May 26th. And each winner will receive a $25 gift certificate to the Copper Kettle. So please send your submissions to the activities department. Right now, there's two ways you can do it. You can either go to the website, uh, our association website, and there are some instructions on how you can upload your own picture onto the website. Or if you don't feel confident doing that, you can go ahead and submit your photo to the activities department, care of Rachel Stone uh, at First Service Residential. It's all on there. So you can check it out, it's, it's on the daily report. And our Sip and Paint class has been a big hit. So we're gonna do, be doing those monthly. Um, our next one is actually planned for June 23rd. We actually had one yesterday and that was a blast. Um, so the next one is June 23rd and you need to have, the cost is $10, it's through the Arb Barn. And remember, you go ahead and connect up with Sue Turley, who is the instructor there, and you pay her directly is how you do that, through Zelle or PayPal. She has several different ways to do it. So just give her a buzz. It's only $10 still, and uh, you have to pay by June 19th, Friday, June 19th, and you can be in on the class with us. It, she does do it via Facebook Live if you haven't done it with us yet. Um, and that's pretty fun. The kit includes paints, a pre-drawn canvas, and you can get other supplies if you need them through her. And she's happy to uh, show you what else she um, can supply for you if you need it. Uh, let's see. Oh, if you guys have not seen our very first Fur Seasons dog show, for goodness sake, take a minute and play them because we have some very talented dogs in this community. And we got three winners um, and you can read all about it on the daily report. Pretty cute. And I wanna especially thank all those um, residents that did fill out the dog show judging form and send it back to us because you guys were the ones that picked the winners. That was so cute. I do want to tell you, Cindy, I thought it's so cute to watch those dogs doing their tricks. Yay, Gracie. It was I, I loved it. I don't have a dog, but I thought it was adorable. Oh, <laughs> yay. Um, and remember, we have to really thank the participants that entered because me and my learning curve, I completely deleted the first one before oh. we ever put on. So we actually had everybody decide they would go ahead and participate in the redo of the oh. first season's dog show. So be sure to check it out. It was really fun. Uh, Performing Arts Club uh, is looking for two more radio shows. And I dare you, all of you, <laughs> to be sure you get on that daily report and watch the two shows. One was Flash Gordon, and one was Burns and Allen, and they're adorable. Speaking of adorable, Gracie? Yep, they're Gracie, really great. They were so <laughs> much fun. Yes, they did all their auditions with uh, Zoom. They did all their rehearsals on Zoom, and they did their final performance that way as well. So that's cool. Um, if you are a card player and are super missing playing cards with your group, guess what? Pinochle Group has now started an online Pinochle card game every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And this way, everybody can still play together, but they don't have to worry about touching cards. And they still get to relate with one another. So see the daily report and the breeze for specific times for that pinochle group online. And just to make it easier for you guys, guess what? I just had a wonderful meeting with Eric yesterday. And because we are getting so many requests from residents who would like to have the activities be more 
consolidated all of our opportunities and things and competitions and all that. We are going to help people find them all in one place. So we will be very, very shortly, like maybe even next week. So stay tuned and find out. Um, we will be sending out not only the daily report, but on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we're going to send out our new Four Seasons Beaumont Activities Corner Blast. And that's going to have our shut-in theater uh, episodes, both the Meet the Musicians and Music Maker interviews. It's going to have some of our upcoming concerts. Yeah, we have some concerts that are going to be uh, done via Zoom, which should be fun with a happy hour. Um, our isolation interviews, that's uh, different residents, get to know your neighbors interviews, which are fun. And any special photo competitions or special events that we've got going that you can participate. So be looking forward to that. I'm still not sure. We'll, we'll ask some folks and see. Um, if we're going to put the boredom busters on the, leave it on the daily report because it's every day, or if we're going to put the boredom busters on the activities corner, because I know I hear, especially from Barbara Wasco and those guys, that they love having their boredom buster every day when they read the daily report. So we'll see, but that's it. We are trying to make this as fun and connecting as possible. And don't forget, if you haven't put little white lights up around your house to signify um, unity during this uh, stay at home order, feel free to do so because it's really fun driving around at night and seeing the lights go. So Cindy. look forward to June. It's going to be fun. Thank you. Cindy, Cindy, yeah. Cindy, stop. You're, Joe, you're, Joe, what? you're doing great and laying out the ballroom uh, to maximize the number of people that could be in there and still maintain the social distancing. Could you yes. please do that on the outside as well, behind the fountain, that huge open area out there? So yep. we it might be wise to do a lot of these things since it's the summertime and the weather is good, especially it'll cool down uh, in the evening, uh, you know, do it. Uh, you know, six o'clock, seven o'clock in the evening, have functions and lay out the, the, the back area there. So again, you can maximize the total number of people that you have there and still, uh, you know, and still have the social distancing, distancing. You should be able to get a lot more people out in that back area in the summertime uh, than you can inside the ballroom. Could you look at that as well? Oh yeah, Joe, absolutely. So do you want me to do, um, Amp, the amphitheater as well as the back yes. loggia area and ballroom? I don't think the amphitheater is going to work. It's too constrained. I'm talking about that, that huge open area behind the fountain. Uh, oh. I love the, uh, the amphitheater, but I don't think we're going to be able to get to that. It's going to be too packed uh, in, in, inside that area. I think we're going to need uh, you know, that big open area. And there's no reason we can bring chairs. And, and lay the chairs out, uh, you know, in that in that big open space, and keep them far enough apart. I, you know, I think that would tend to give us more things we can do, uh, okay. more people involved, and more activities. That uh, you know, it's the summertime, so the weather is good, and, and we could take advantage of it. Okay, yeah. Joe. Cindy, I'd I'd also, but uh, I'd add that amphitheater because we have on our agenda today a proposal from facilities to change the look of the amputator, uh, amphitheater and increase its uh, usage by numbers. So I, if, as long as Willis has taken the time to lay the thing out, I'd have him lay out all three. That would be more helpful, I think. Although, you know, all that stuff in the amphitheater is very, very good and very important. We definitely need to expand that. I guess I just didn't think that you could expand, even with the expansion, when we're back to normal again, that expansion will be great for us. But I, I, you know, I don't know that right now you can get that many, you know, that many people in there. That's why I said, you know, with the big open area behind the the fountain. But yeah, they, certainly the the amphitheater needs to be expanded. We may have to revisit uh, 
depending on what the restrictions end up being released to, but have the board revisit amphitheater for the, let's say, July concert and yeah. that forward on how you want to do it? Yeah, I think, I think as the restrictions are limited, certainly the board will look at that because we're all missing those concerts now. And I, I'd hate to go through the summer without any of this, the wonderful concerts we've had in the past. So well, that's why, that's why Jerry, I was, I was proposing doing this thing in that big open area. We can have the concert in that area. Right. You can get a lot more people there than you can with the spacing in the, in the amphitheater. Definitely. Yeah, no, that would be a, a great place for the concerts. Uh, I, I think that what, what you're getting at, Joe, and I think you're right, but uh, we don't know the numbers. We, we've seen that the amphitheater uh, enlargement was going to increase seating by about 100 people, if I remember correctly. And it should. But, but if, if uh, Willis would, would look at a layout of the amphitheater in its expanded uh, format and the proper spacing compared to what you're talking about, Joe, it may be that one is grossly uh, different than the other, and it may either uh, eliminate one or the other in the future. Are you following trying to say? No, no. We need, we need to get right. apples I guess, apples. I guess I can't conceive that the amphitheater, even in its expanded form, is going to be anywhere near as as expansive as as that area behind the, the fountain, that whole big open area. I tend to agree with you, but I think it, it'd still be good to have the numbers so we can sure. we know. Sure, sure. Okay, and then maybe we'll just, um, we'll toss it over to you each month and see what you think, depending on what the governor's um, mandates are. And see yeah, what you think. Where you think we've we got to be it. we've got to be clever here uh in in you know with all this uh this uh, coronavirus thing going on to really make sure that the, the, the folks get the maximum uh enjoyment out of our community and still keep them safe yeah good one okay okay anything else cindy no nope, i think we've got it Stay tuned. There's more fun to come. We got a lot of things on the books right now. Oh yeah. All right. Thanks, Cindy. I'm gonna. Yep. Me. me. Okay. We're gonna take Cindy's smiling face down now. I will. I will. Uh, next is the uh, <laughs> management report, starting on pages 50 through 62. Management updates and activity log, and then 63 through 73, or some correspondence from homeowners. There was a request from the on page 72 from the pickleball group to uh, allow doubles, not in the same household. Are you looking at this as a motion, Eric? Uh, I would say if the board wants to discuss it, it would be a motion. If, if the board is happy with the doubles as being from a, um, the same household, then you could. I I think we discussed that earlier today, and I think we found out that as far as the state and county are concerned, it's still a singles uh, parameter for us, and uh, we we should stay in compliance with the state and county. I would I, I would agree with that. Be happy. I agree. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. So then there's a need for a motion. Correct. So I'll, I'll I'll move then that we keep it as a singles commodity until the state or the county. Uh, allows doubles. I second that motion. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded. Uh, any <laughs> further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Next. First, uh, first proposal, pages 74 through 83 is from the Facilities Committee. Uh, this is to Redo the, those door casings up at the summit. Uh, total cost of the project would be 20, or not 20. <laughs> Look, I messed up a digit there. 2,850, not 28,050. Little difference, little difference. So 2,850, and that would be a reserve expense. Yeah, that those jams are pretty pretty rotted there, and, and this work does need to be done. 
So I would propose that we accept the $2,850 um, uh, proposal from absolute contractors to do this work. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any opposed? <coughs> motion carries. So the motion, I guess, reads uh, motion to approve absolute contractors in the amount of uh, $2,850 to remove and install new door casings and moldings at the Summit Pool. Is that correct, Eric? Yes. Okay. Uh, one second. Gracie, I, I'm not sure why you're muted. Are you still? Are you there? Uh oh. There, I can hear you now. I don't know what happened, but you muted me. I was raising my hand. To... <laughs> sorry about that. that was weird. I'm... Sorry. All right, thank you. I guess I'm back. You're back. You are, but it shows muted. I'm gonna lower your hand. Are you still there? Yeah, you can take my hand away. There we go. Okay. I'm here. All right. I don't see me now, but I see you, Eric. Okay, I see. I see you. Um, when did you get muted on accident? Uh, when you were doing the management updates. The the la I'm sorry. The last one, the act acting or whatever you just did with the eyes and the nays. But I eyed anyway. You just didn't hear me. Okay. Just making sure we're all okay. Happy. We're starting at page seventy-four now, correct? Uh, we just did seventy-four for the for the summit casings. Okay. Were you an eye for that as well? What's that? We're on eighty-four. Yes, now we're on eighty-four. Where did you okay, vote? I'm here. Uh, okay, good. Right. I'm going to record your vote as an eye for the summit casings. Is that? Thank you. Okay. Yes, great. that's fine. All right, so eighty-four is a proposal from the finance committee for the activities director to have an actual um, her own separate bank account still through the association uh, so she's not having a $300 revolving petty cash but can actually uh, fund still approved from uh, approved by the association or by the board for events uh, but it would be a, a way for for her to, to do so easily more easily I'll make a motion to approve the, is it 5,000, Eric? 5,500. 5,500, revolving petty cash and checking debit account assigned to the activity director. I'll and I second it. I'll second that. Okay, it's been, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion on the item? Sounds like oh, a it, very good idea. It's something that may, it should make us flow a lot smoother doing this way and, and uh, cut out a lot of, uh, yeah. A lot of back and forth now. Yeah, I think it's a lot of time for Cindy back and forth. Yeah. yeah. It'll also make it easier for her too to do something on with everything changing constantly. Right. She'll have the ability to be more flexible. Yeah, so this and, is good. And, and especially I understood there was a, a, a little bit of a wait time between when she used up the money, turned in receipts, and got a check back to go again. If that's the case, this is the only way that will work because she's busy all the time. Eric, I, I, I think it would be cost saving. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. It would be time saving, yes. And cost saving. Any other? Any other? Definitely time saving and cost saving. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Any, any further discussion? Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And I guess it should be authorized and allocate $5,500 uh, for Cindy's revolving petty cash checking debit account that's assigned to her currently. So yeah. that's basically it. Thank you. Thank you. And, and just for clarification, I, I know Jolene moved. I heard Kathy as the, uh, the second. So did I. Okay. Just making sure we're all on the same page. All right. Next is a uh, proposal from the Landscape Committee to replace some trees that have have died down on Breckenridge. Uh, we are in discussion with the builder oh. on this to be replaced through their warranty. So I don't know if, if you would like to approve it in 
uh, or we'll table this until next month when we can finalize the, the warranty discussions with the builder. How far, are we, how far are we along in the discussions with the builder on this? Uh, we've had several emails back and forth uh, with details as far as when the backflows were taken and, and uh, replaced, but there's been no final, final word from the builder. And to my knowledge, this is the these are the trees that they planted sometime around January. So they're full. They should still fully be under warranty, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Their claim was that the uh, the backflow the backflows were stolen in that area, um, but they were re replaced within a week. They had word from uh, a, a third party that it took over a month to get those replaced, and that's why they died. Uh, and so they weren't going to replace it. I mean, and. and I would agree with them. If we didn't have water to something for a month, then shame on us. But it, it was, uh, the, those backflows were replaced within within a week. So well, if, if, the, if the backflows had caused the trees to die, all the bushes would be dead too. And it doesn't appear that the bushes are dead, just the trees. Yes. Yeah. So, so what I, do you think? Uh, uh, table until next month and wait for the uh, builder to come, come forward with uh, his response? Yes. Well, Eric, you said as far as the roof was concerned and the coring that we were doing with the cracks in the streets, that even though we, we did it and paid for it now, we could still go back and get that money from them later. Is that still the case? For the, for the, for the building stuff, yes. I would say it, for this, it'd be prudent to wait for them to replace them themselves. Were, yeah. this, this also changes the trees. The, they are what are they they are strawberry right now and this will change them to be african sumac so it'd, it'd be different well i'm thinking that if we don't allow them the opportunity to replace the trees they may bulk at what kind of trees we put in and refuse to pay us yes i i agree that's likely what they could do as long as they say they're going to do it then let, let's let them do it and just put this aside yeah that's so table table it. for months. I I move that we table this uh, i have a second I'll second it all right, so move and second to the table for a month. Got it. Zerbo. Okay, uh, any other discussion? All in favor of the uh, table and the uh, African sumac trees? Aye. 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 Opposed? No opposed? Then uh, the motion is approved and uh, tabled until we get a response from KHAV. Thank you. Next on pages 89 to 91 is a proposal from the Landscape Committee to replace some, some, uh, some planting at the corner of Mock Bluff and Rosemary Gardens. Total cost is $790. I'll make a motion to approve $790 for the replacement of uh, plant life on Mock Bluff and Rosemary Gardens. Do I have a second? I'll second. All, uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Under, under, Aye. Opposed? Under, under discussion, uh, does that does that $790 just include the uh, rich? No, that's uh, no, in, in, uh, Joe, uh, uh, Pete includes red carpet rose, the golden uh, unimus, uh, white iceberg rose, uh, red iceberg rose. It's that whole paragraph no, there. The whole paragraph. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Very good. So uh, let's do that again. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? The motion carries uh, $790 approved to uh as suggested by landscape uh, to be accomplished by park west of those uh, different plant materials great thank you very much next on pages 92 through 94 is a request from the landscape committee uh, to do some amphitheater renovations it would add seating uh, this proposal or the the drawings and plans came from the cpc if you want to say cpt it's gonna it might slip once in a while but the community planning committee uh right. drawn by willis and walked with the landscaper and then landscape committee took it and uh passed that through finance and now it is to you 
I move we accept the proposal to uh, in, uh, increase the size of the amphitheater for a total of $4,945. I second that. Any uh, discussion? Yeah, uh, I, actually. How much is this going to increase? That, that was the question I was going to ask. How much, how much greater will this be? Yeah. Uh, it will increase the seating by approximately 100 seats. 100 so we have 200, it's, supposed, it's going to go to 300? Uh, right. I believe I fit 300 down there now. So this would go from 300 to 400. Oh, 300 to 400. Okay, so that's about 25%. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. That's good. That's good. Okay. So we have a motion on that yet? Yeah, Joe you moved, Tracy seconded. Okay, uh, any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Who opposed? The motion carries uh, to have uh, artistic maintenance uh, provide the labor and material to relandscape the amphitheater as as uh, listed by the uh, facilities or landscape committee. Thank you. Thank you. Next is a proposal from the activities director for a classic car and motorcycle morale boosting parade. Uh, no cost the association, people would stay in their cars so they'd be socially distanced if the guidelines haven't been uh, restricted by then. Uh, the, there's no set date, but this would be in uh, June. Again, there's no cost. So they'll go through every street in the association. Uh, so it'll be a couple hours, but it'll be a couple hours of, of fun. Also moved. Uh, so Larry, okay. And I think Pete seconded. Yes, I second it. Perfect. Okay, it's been motioned and second. Uh, any further discussion on the uh, motorcycle and car parade? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No opposed motion. Uh, motion's carried. Uh, we don't have a firm date in June, but sometime in June for the uh, motorcycle morale boosting parade. Thank you, uh, Cindy, for putting that together. Thank you. Uh, next on pages 97 through 140 are the February and March financial statements. Uh, these were reviewed at two different finance committee meetings. Both had two board members, but with a new civil code change, I will still put it on the uh, agenda. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the February and March financial statements that were uh, reviewed and approved in finance, uh, finance committee and um, two board members, Jerry and Kathy at two different meetings along with I reviewed them. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. I second. Any further discussion on um, February and March financial an uh, analysis reports? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries on the motion uh, to accept the February and March financial analysis reports. Thank you. Uh, next is a proposal from the Emergency Preparedness Committee uh, for signs for the bathrooms to wash, to remind residents to wash their hands. The total cost for this, the, the original proposal from EPC, the cost is 413. Uh, Finance Committee looked at it and um, approved a cost of $300. May I say anything on that? I listen to You're breaking Hello? up a little bit, Gracie. Pressure you to break it up. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Regarding the wash your hands signs, Placing signs in our restrooms are not going to change the habits of our residents. They either wash their hands or and I think signs like this detract from the appearance of our facility and it makes it look like the bathrooms and commercial buildings or your local restaurants. It just deteriorates um, the appearance. I think if people they know to wash their hands. I just don't think it's 
putting this sign there is not going to change the habits of your residents, our residents. So that's just my own personal thing. It's not the cost. I mean, it's a, the cost is, is minute, but it's just, it just detracts from the appearance of our, of our community. And, and that's exactly why this was brought to the board. The, the cost is something that we could, uh, that the board has authorized us to, to make. I mean, it's, it's the, like you said, the cost is, is minuscule, but the change in appearance is not. So that's why this was brought to the finance committee and the board uh, for the board's discussion. I think, uh, Eric, for the purpose of uh, discussion, we should motion, second it, then discuss it. And if I, it doesn't fly, we can vote against it. Yes. Right. I, I, How about I make, a motion? Uh, I make a motion that we that we table it. Thank you, Pete. Any second? Yeah. Well, a table is just going to have it set out there in unfinished business for um, until it's discussed and either dies or is passed. Yeah. So the motion should be to uh, to to de deny this uh either to well the motion if the board wants to discuss it then the motion would be to approve it you'd have a motion to approve a second you could discuss it and then when it calls for a vote if nobody votes for it then it dies for lack of a vote and then it okay okay i'll, I'll move to approve it for a cost of 413 dollars uh, the I'll cost will be three hundred dollars for discussion, but not approving necessarily. So you seconded Jolene for discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> any any discussion? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Not a good since, idea. Since I proposed it, since I proposed it, uh, I, I I'm I'm going to make a case for it. <laughs> uh, I agree a, a lot with with what uh, Nancy. Uh, Grace said about uh, about it being being unsightly, but this is not something that's going to be there forever. Under these circumstances, uh, you know, the, this this sign these signs would be up for maybe a year or so, and then they go away. And I think uh, a reminder to the people that you better damn well wash your hands again. It's a protective thing, uh, and if it's not so beautiful right now, which I agree, it's not. Uh, and and it, it does keep uh, the people remembering to wash their hands. Uh, I think that it's worthwhile doing. Well, I'm hey, mad, but I have to. No, I, I have to just. Go ahead. I have to just. I have to just. Oh, sorry. I I have a comment. Uh, you have three quotes in here, or three bids: one for four hundred dollars, one for two eighty one, one for seven hundred. And Eric said 300. Now, I don't see a 300 one. And why are we why are we even discussing the 400 one? Uh, the 400 one was the was the recommended uh, signs from EPC. Uh, finance approved the proposal with a not to exceed amount of 300 dollars. Was their recommendation? Not to exceed 300. Okay. The number is moot. Yeah, it's a moot point. Uh, yeah, it's it's right. not important whether we want to sign. Right. Any other okay. question? I, I have uh, some. I have something. I agree with Gracie. I think that we're all adults and we've all been taught to wash our hands. Putting the signs up is going to detract from the way that the community looks, and a lot of our bathrooms, especially at the ballroom, are used by people that don't live here too. So I'd like to keep it looking as nice as possible. So I agree with her on that. Yeah, and I, Gracie. I, Gracie, and I, I actually agree. really believe that it's not going to change that. Can you hear me? That yeah. it's not going to change the habits of our, our uh, residents any more than they actually do at any commercial building. I've been in restrooms. We all have. People go in, they look straight at that sign, walk out, and don't even wash their hands. I agree with you, Gracie. They do that all the time. Yep. Yeah. Why they yep. Yeah. Yeah. And and definitely it, it would make the bathrooms unsightly uh, even though we're in COVID now. I agree with you, Gracie. If they're not in the habit of washing their hands, that sign's, sign's not going to make them do it. So any other discussion? I would like to make a motion that we do not have the signs. Well, uh, we're just going to vote on it, Pete. Uh, okay. 
Discussions over. All in favor of uh, approving those signs? I guess I'm going to be alone, but I'll say yay. Okay. Joe is in favor. All in opposition? Aye. 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 opposition. So Aye. six ones. Motion uh, does not carry. It, it, uh, it fails. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Joe, for putting it on so we could talk about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, let's see. The shuffleboard courts from facilities is being tabled. That went to finance earlier this week. Uh, there were some questions that, that they had uh, raised that facilities agreed with to take it back to the community planning committee. Uh, so it's going to go back to them for final discussion and then back to Eric, finance. Eric, what was the problem there? Since I'm the liaison on facilities, what, what, what was done there? Uh, the question was whether community planning had truly blessed the location to move up to the summit from its current location down here behind the RCN, and then also what the cost was to demo the courts that are there now. So the board would have a complete picture as far as, you know, it's going to cost X amount to move it, um, which would be a capital expenditure, and then it's going to cost X amount to demo, because uh, right now it's, it's not a, a full picture for the board to, to see. Okay, I understand. Next would be, again, from facilities, a proposal to uh, fix that beautiful fountain and make it beautiful again uh, behind the, uh, in the loggia area. Uh, total cost for this would be $5,620, which would be a reserve expense. Now I, I move that we accept the proposal from pool physicians for a total of $5,620 to, uh, to fix and renovate the fountain. I second it. Okay, Pete seconded it. Uh, any discussion? Just for clarification, this is the one behind the lodge, right? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. it's on the okay. loggia. Okay. Okay, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the motion to remove and uh, and uh, install the uh, necessary parts, etc., at the fountain water feature in the loggia, in the amount of fifty-six twenty, by pool physicians. That carries. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, next on pages one hundred seventy-nine through uh, one hundred ninety or no one hundred eighty-seven is a proposal from the safety committee to add uh, lane dividers, lane striping on Four Seasons Circle. Total cost would be $4,446. Eric, I would yeah. like to ask a couple questions on this. Uh, I, again, I think me? do that. Yeah. Okay, can I ask a couple questions? I, I would advise proper uh, protocol would be to, to motion second, then have discussion and, and have the question. Oh, okay. Yes, Just okay. like the signs. Can I have a motion to approve? I second. Oh, approve. I'll approve it. All right, Larry. Who, who's my second? You say Kathy. Kathy, thank you. All right. All right, Gracie. Okay. Fire away. Okay. I just have a couple questions. This caught my eye when I was looking at the agenda. Number one, how often is this crossing to the other side happening? Number two, how many complaints over how many years have we had this happen? I look at this as a little bit nebulous. I'll tell you what I believe the problem over the years has been, and that's our own driver staying on the road, period. So I just would really like to know how often is this crossing to the other side happening, and how many complaints have you really gotten? I, I drive the streets all the time. I have never once seen anybody cross over into any other lane. Um, maybe that's just me. But I, I just think the problem over the years has really been the driver staying on the road, period. We've had a number of trees hit, and I don't think that's just crossing on the other side. Gracie, so I was just curious. Gracie, I agree with you. I've, I've had the same experience. I don't see people driving all over the road. And actually, a white line down the middle uh, makes it's us horrible. look less yeah, it, it, it's, it's less attractive, uh, less, uh, 
well, it, let's put it this way, it's more downtown city street look, and I it's don't curious. know that we want that look. It's, it's not, and, it's not a big and deal. And I don't care how, as I'm looking here. Gracie, yeah, I agree. and I just think for that amount of money, is it that necessary? No. Gracie, I agree with you. I think the cosmetics of doing that is almost uh, superfluous. Uh, yeah, I, I even think if you if even if you put the pretty glass beads down, it just looks tacky, and I don't think I, we need it in such a small community. I really don't. Okay. I've lived, Again, I've that's lived just. Here, I've lived here almost 16 years, I believe. And I don't recall ever seeing an accident because the lines in the road are. Yeah, uh, you're right. And so I, I think it would take away from the uh, the beauty of the community. Yes. We have we have many more problems just in our roundabouts over by the lodge. That one of people just deciding they want to get to the other side quicker on the roundabout, but not on our streets. And I think well, that money could be spent in a better way. During finance's um, review of this the other day, just in that small group of people, there were several people that were concerned about the aesthetics of putting the lines down the middle of the road. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and we we had looked on on Google Earth on Google Maps to at, at some other communities in the area, um, and and only we saw that uh, uh, Four Seasons Hemet had some, but the ones out in the desert did not. And again, yeah, the the committee. Although they recommended, or, or not recommended, they, they uh, saw that there's financing for it. Uh, I think this goes back to a thing where it's, you know, there might be money for it, but it goes to the, to the board to decide, like, eh, is that really the look that, that, the, that the community uh, wants? It also adds an additional cost to every slurry seal that we have done for the thermoplastic to be removed and then replaced for every slurry seal. Yep, mm -hmm. absolutely. And then there's also the cost of maintenance. Yeah. Well, and, and honestly, I mean, the cost is not outrageous. I mean, it's not, you know, $100,000 to put the, the, the line there. It, it's more the cosmetic, you know, is that. You know, I just look? think it's an unnecessary thing to do. I just don't, I, like I said, I just many people crossing over to the other side with head-on collisions here. I don't yeah. see it. Gracie, you're into beauty, I see. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you, I was on the safety. Well, you know, we live in a beautiful place. And yes, we do. Right. Kathy, what were you saying? I was going to say, I was on the safety committee when we were looking at this, and we had several residents come to our safety committee meeting to say that there's people driving. It's not necessarily crossing over. They're driving down the middle of Four Seasons. And that's problematic. So that that was one of the reasons that they looked at this on safety. Yeah, that's uh, I was because I'm a liaison to that committee, and I remember the 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 complaints were is that people have an opportunity to take the uh, take the where they're going to drive in the road out of the left side of the road or the right side, and they choose to go down the middle. So I I don't know how many people that is uh, that is doing that, but I I do know it's occurring, but. If, uh, well, if it's occurring, it's, if it's occurring, it doesn't appear that it's causing accidents. No, no. no, no, they, no there's no. If, if they're going down the middle of the road and there's nobody coming, there's not, it's not a safety problem. If there's somebody coming and they take their half out of the middle, then it becomes a problem. And I haven't heard of any any of those types of situations. Well, Larry, I, that's the people that came to the safety committee. No, I, I know. Yeah. yeah, that's the numbers that that we can talk about is only the few that come to the safety committee right. and over the years, uh, people complaining here and there. But, uh, you know, we've discussed it pretty good. Any more discussion on it? Okay, let's call for the vote. All in favor of putting the, uh, the st broken stripes on Four Seasons Circle, uh, all in favor. Opposed? Aye. 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 Motion okay. fails. Motion fails. Uh, it doesn't carry. Got it. Thank you. And the last item of new business is a proposed uh, change to the guidelines to add uh, item number 11, 
In consideration of others, please avoid wearing chemical fragrances that may cause health effects to others when utilizing smaller enclosed spaces such as the gym, movie theater, billiards room, etc. Uh, there's no cost at this time. This will go out for a 28-day homeowner comment if the board uh, approves that uh, today. So and we need a motion to send it out to our community. Yes. Okay. Any? Do I have a motion? I have. A, I'll make a motion. Thank you, Pete. Second. I'll second it. Okay. Second. But Any discussion? I have yeah. a question. I have a question. Sure. So, yes. who would determine what fragrances are offensive? I mean, this this is where. I understand some people are allergic to it and I get all that. But my question is who would determine what's offensive? Yeah, who's gonna smell all of this and see if we did something <laughs> that we shouldn't be doing? This is a slippery slope if we get into it. Yes, it is, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I mean most of us use soap and soap has a, some kind of a... I mean, everything how, I use has a fragrance. <laughs> I hope you don't like my uh, aftershave or arm, uh, underarm deodorant. I, I think the request came from the uh, people that, that used uh, in, in, the, in the one homeowner's mind an excessive amount where it caused them discomfort. Well, I agree. It's, you know, it's look, a, let's look at it this way. If I have an allergy to peanuts, I don't tell everybody in the world that they can have peanuts. I make, it's my responsibility to stay away from peanuts. And, and if I have an allergy to perfumes or hairsprays or whatever, uh, I, I'm either going to uh, not stay close to a person that has that, or if it's if it really a problem, then I, I have to change my life a little bit. I can't expect the world to change for me. I would agree. I, I agree with that statement. Uh, it is a very slippery slope, and you would have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to test all the fragrances. Yeah, and, and basically, uh, it's it, who's going to police it? That's going to be important. I can see uh, a neighbor on neighbor co confrontations over, uh -huh. uh, you don't like my uh, uh, diamonds and whatever, and or I use Paul Sebastian, somebody may be offended to that. So I, I think uh, Larry's slippery soap is a, a slope is a real slippery slope here. And uh, I think uh, some of our groups like Ping Pong and others have, have basically asked their people not to use fragrances if they're gonna be in the, uh, in, in the room playing Ping Pong or other things. But I think, uh, uh, I know they want board approval to enforce it, but I think it should be uh, more voluntary because I don't see us getting into that situation of policing the fragrances. Well, I have a question. That's my opinion. I have one I more question. Kathy. Um, in, in the write-up, write it says that it's also a violation of the ADA. Do, no. do we know that for a fact? Well, we don't have to follow ADA for Okay, sure. okay. Yeah, good. That answered my question. It, it yeah. should be a person to person thing though. If I find that you're near me and, and uh, you know, the, the fragrance is, is offensive to me uh, and that this is something that happens every day, let's say in the gym working out or whatever, uh, you know, you talk to your, to your neighbor and hopefully uh, we all would cooperate with each other and say, could you please not, not wear that when you're in here or, you know, ask them, uh, if they're sitting in, in a seat or in an area where, uh, you know, they're near to you, you know, maybe try to work something out where that person can move further away or you can move further away. So uh, probably just person to person, they need to work it out. I agree. Yeah. Okay, we've discussed it. Uh, it's been motioned and second. And so if uh, we don't vote for, for Jerry to clarify, if we don't vote for, if we don't vote yes for this, it won't go out for Right. If we uh, oppose it, it won't go out. It will not go out? Will it not. will not go out. The board appears uh, verbally, so far appears to be against it. So we motioned and seconded it. So if I'm correct, Eric, we can just uh, vote to either approve or deny here, right? Hold on. I think well, right. we got muted again. Hold on one sec. The, the, the proposal or, or the vote was 
to accept it. So now we have to vote nay. 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 We would vote nay. Again, uh, I was was muted again. There you go. Uh, on this on this one thing, um, there are a lot of people who put lotion for medicinal purposes. They have psoriasis. It can go to your skin, but if you put ours, there's I can. Uh, I think Grace is saying if you there's medical things that cause us a fragrance too, and how do we stop people from using their medical? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We. Yeah. Uh, I agree. We should not be involved in this, and I think the board so far has, has voiced that pretty strongly that. Uh, the fragrance control and and emotion to support that would not be a good idea at this time. yeah that's that's really really going out on a limb to do something like that actually i, I think fragrances smell better than the sweat <laughs> i agree with you gracie i i think so eric uh, we want to it looks like we want to vote on this and from the polling i've seen so far verbally it looks like we're not in great support of it so uh, basically, I'll just call for uh, those in favor. Anybody in favor of uh, putting this out for 28 days to our residents? No. Those opposed? Aye. 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 Unanimous uh, for uh, opposition of sending it out. Okay. Motion failed. Uh, there's no unfinished business, so the next meeting would be Tuesday, or not Tuesday, Thursday, June 11th. Uh, 2 p 1 p.m. at more than likely via Zoom, but hopefully in the ballroom. Before we close down, Eric, I'd, I'd like to uh, say again, welcome to the new board members. Thank you for all the board members for what they do and to our committee members who to work tirelessly for year after year to make this place a better place. And to our residents out there, hopefully you'll be back again next month to join us for our open meetings. We need a motion to uh, adjourn. Yes, sir. I motion to adjourn. I second it. Comment, Jerry, before you close, I want to comment, Jer uh, compliment Jerry on uh, because of the Zoom and especially all the other things you got going, the ability to call for uh, uh, positive and negatives on every motion. Thank you for that. I agree. Yeah, yeah that's Thank good, Jerry. Jerry. Good Real job, there. Good job, Jerry. Thank, Thank you, guys. And uh, again, thank you for. Uh, for the, today was our first unit meeting together, executive session, and our first board meeting. And uh, I think uh, I'm going to enjoy working with all of you. Thank you again. A motion to uh, yeah. we have the motion and second it. All in favor of uh, of closing the meeting. Aye. 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 Uh, that one was pretty unanimous. That one was. <laughs> motion to close. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.